Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be installing a Bouge RV solar panel and solar controller on my Forerunner here. I wanted to maximize the amount of solar that I could fit on my roof and I wasn't able to fit two 200 watt panels or three 100 watt panels. So a single 400 watt panel was the way to go for me and it's very very hard to find a single 400 watt panel for sale on the market. There's only a couple companies that make them that I know. Everybody else sells them in a, a minimum quantity of 10. So to be able to buy just one and add a great price is awesome. Uh, this panel is bifacial, so it collects sun from both sides. It's also monocrystalline, so it's super efficient, and it has 10 bus bars, so partial shade is not going to affect this panel nearly as much as most of the other ones on the market, especially the older designed panels. Very, very efficient panel. It's also black and looks extremely stealthy. Uh, it's actually mounted right now, and you can barely tell. People walking by this on the street will have no idea that this is a solar panel. So super, super stealthy. I'm also going to be installing a 60 amp MPPT solar controller that is also very very efficient and it has a Bluetooth app so I can hide the solar controller inside my build and not even, not even be able to see it. This setup will work on a van, a schoolie, you can add a lot more panels on a schoolie or something larger, uh, any, any instance. You could set this up on a cabin somewhere, any kind of off-grid situation where you need solar panel. This is a great way to go and these big panels are getting so efficient now that it's really just an awesome buy. So let's check it out. All right, let's get started on this install. So the first step is to mock it up, get the panel exactly where you want it measure everything make sure it's nice and straight and then we can get started on actually mounting it so pretend that that little hole drilled in the side of the solar panel isn't there I'll show you why that's there in a second first I'm gonna mock up all these parts and adjust them exactly where they're gonna go so that when I drill holes everything is nice and perfectly lined up Okay, at this point, I'm going to remove all those L brackets that I just used to drill the holes, and then I can install them onto the solar panel first. And after I do that, I can go through and tighten them all down. I'm using stainless steel hardware and a lock nut on the back, washers on both sides. So before I tighten everything down and finish the other side, I'm going to go ahead and get all my wiring connected and get everything nice and secure. I'm using a zip tie back there on the back side to make sure that these wires aren't flopping around in the wind and nothing comes disconnected or gets uh, chafed and uh, ends up causing a short. So I'm going to use multiple zip ties up here to make sure that my wiring is nice and tight everywhere. And I'm going to use this inline fuse to make sure that if for some reason the panel does have a short that we're going to be fully covered with the power coming into the solar controller. So there's my inline fuse. I'm going to connect everything and then I can go ahead and go and tighten everything down all the way and move inside the vehicle. So just as there are many ways to attach the solar panel to your roof, there are also many ways to get the cable inside your vehicle. In my case, I just laid it over the factory rubber seal of my rear hatch, and that has had no problem uh, at all. There's, there's no leaks. I've been in atmospheric rivers, 40 mile an hour winds, and driving down the freeway uh, during heavy rainstorms, no problem. So I got the cable through. I'm gonna use these little cable ties to hold it up while I get ready to actually install the solar controller. One of the reasons why I picked this particular solar controller is because I knew it would be very underworked and I'd still have room to add another panel to it and it would be good and it has a great Bluetooth app. So I'm in very limited space in this Forerunner here. I'm just going to hard mount this in a place where it can have plenty of ventilation. It's definitely best to have it go up and down for the heat sink, but I didn't want that heat going into my bed. So I ended up mounting the sideways. That's not recommended, but it's what I got in this situation. And uh, I'll never have to look at this thing again because I've got the fantastic Bluetooth app. So let's get this thing wired up. Okay, so here is a spot where you could potentially damage your solar panel and potentially cause a fire. To do this, you want to make sure that your solar panel is unplugged at the solar panel, especially if you're outside and the sun is out because these wires will be hot if you do not, or at least the positive one. So I'm going to go ahead and strip these wires and get them prepared to attach inside of the solar controller. Okay, so at this point we can just loosen up the areas where the wires are going to go and then I'll give the wire ends a nice tight twist, make sure they're nice and tight, stick them where they go, tighten it down and give it a friendly little tug to make sure that they don't pop out and it's a nice and secure connection. 
So at this point, it's important to note that we still have the solar panel disconnected from the solar controller. We're getting ready to hook this thing up to the battery, but we're gonna need to take a break for a second and go to the app to make sure that we have our system voltage set right and our battery type set right and all the parameters that go with it. So let's, uh, let's come back to the app and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Let's roll through this installation because we're almost done. I'm um, basically just tightening everything up, making sure everything's good. There's a cover that goes over this part that I'll actually put back on. And then um, once that happens and there's power to the unit from the battery, then we can go into the app, make sure everything's good, and then reconnect the solar and go test it out. So I'm using these bus bars to the right to connect different loads to my main battery. And I'm going to twist the uh, connector to exactly where it needs to be before I crimp All it. right, so let's take a look at the app here. When you, um, when you click on it on your phone, it pops up and you just got to click the device. And then it, it takes you there. So we've got this nice little diagram here. It tells you what's going on. You've got your solar panel information. Wow, it looks like we're pulling in 15.5 volts from the uh, garage light. That's really cool. It's not even sunlight. Uh, and then you've also got your battery information and your loads. And then if you scoot down a little bit, you've got history. Um, I've had this thing parked in here for a few days, so there is no like information in here, but it would tell you, you know, everything from the last, what, five days or so. And you've just got all this information. It's really cool to be able to see this stuff. Just, just nice to know. And then we've got basic info that, you know, you probably won't have to go to that section very much. And up in the corner here, We've got this little gear, that is the settings. So on here you can choose what voltage your system is. You've got uh, 12 and 24, and then you can set your battery type, and we've got all different kinds there. I initially hit the lithium ion phosphate um, setting because I have a lithium battery, and a couple of the settings weren't quite right for my battery, so make sure you go to your battery manufacturer's um, website and get whatever information you need to make sure that these are right for your battery. It's not exactly a one size fits all. They're different batteries have a little bit different parameters sometimes. Um, so the main things I charged changed is the charging limit voltage, the increased charging voltage, the over voltage, and the floating voltage. Um, I think that was it. Yeah, and you can see my settings there. So really easy to use app. You've got really nice full control in this. Um, these settings would be very difficult to change on a solar controller with only a few buttons on it. So this is really nice. And uh, there's no need for like a fancy touch screen or something on a, uh, on a solar controller. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy and uh, have a great day.